Hi all. So today I'd like to cover a problem that I see that comes up a lot in my undergraduate simulation courses. When students are choosing a system to do their first simulation project on, they often choose things like drive throughs uh, or general systems where a customer places an order and then has to be separated from that order and then has to wait on that order to complete while the customer is going through a process on their own. And in some cases, the order might be completed first before the customer gets there or vice versa. But either way, they both have to arrive at the same place and, uh, and rejoin together before they can leave. And so uh, this basic idea of separating and then matching up together uh, can be found in a lot of different systems. And it just happens to show up in a lot, and I think in these term projects that students choose in their first simulation course. Another example of this is an airport where you end up arriving to a security lane, for example, and get separated from your bag. You go through one process, your bag goes through another process. One of you was going to go through to get the, through the process first and then have to wait on the other one. So when we have these, um, these networks, these, uh, these stochastic activity networks, we need um, a way to figure out how to group things back together. So things that um, the, the right customer is grouped with the right order uh, before we allow things to go through. So that's something I'm gonna go over today. And ARENA has two blocks that are really helpful for this. And that is the separate block, which is this one here, and the match block which is this one here. And so where can you find these things? Well, if uh, you look under the basic process block, so I'm gonna try to zoom in on that over here. So in the basic process panel, you'll find the separate block. And that separate block is usually associated with batch operations. Now, where do you find the match block? It's not in here. Well, the match block is under the advanced process panel. So in the advanced process panel, you can find the match block over here. If you don't have the advanced process panel, you can uh, right click on uh, any area in the panels you do have, go to template panel. And uh, let me just maybe expand this again. You can go to uh, right click on an empty space, go to template panel, go to attach, and then you should be able to find the advanced process panel in order to then attach it and use it. All right, so what do these two things do? Well, the separate block takes an entity coming into it. And then if it is a batch, so if you're familiar with batching in Arena, it allows you to split that batch up into multiple parts. Alternatively, the way we're gonna use it here is we're gonna set it to duplicate the original, in which case it creates a clone of the original. And so it has two outputs that come out of it. And you can create how many duplicates you want. In this case, to keep things simple, we're only going to worry about one duplicate. I'm not going to get talk much about this percent cost to duplicates. If you've dealt with costing in Arena, then, uh, then this has to do with that. But that's kind of outside of the scope of this video. So for now, just leave it at 50. And if you're not dealing with costing, it won't matter anyway. So uh, in that case, then the separate block has got two outputs, the original output and the duplicate output. The entity that went into the create order uh, to this dupe, to the separate block here will just get passed right through untouched and it will show up on this output here. Now it will get cloned and a exact duplicate of it. All of its attributes are the same. Everything's the same except it has a new entity ID that gets placed on this output over here. And that right there allows you to simulate the process of someone coming in and making an order and sending their order off inside the store while they're waiting outside the store, for example, or someone coming in with their bag and sending their bag off through one security screening process while they go through a different security screening process. So you can then build the process for the customer and the process for their order. And then you can bring that back together with this merge block. And this merge block over here, this is the one that's under advanced process here, if we click on that, then what that allows us to do is it, it basically notice there are two queues above the merge block. You can set how many queues you want above that merge block. And that will also set how many inputs there are above that merge block. So there are two there. And so there are two inputs. 
And so customers will come into the top input and they queue up in the top queue. Orders, which have been separated from those customers will come into the bottom input and they will queue up on that bottom queue. What it's going to do is if under type here, you can set it to any entities, which just generates whenever there's one in one queue and the other in the other queue, it can group those together. Uh, but we're gonna do something more advanced based on attribute. So what we're gonna say is you need to look for the attribute called customer name in both entities that are in the top queue and in the bottom queue. And when you find an entity that has the same customer name in both queues, so you find a customer entity with a customer name that matches an order entity with that same customer name, at that point, you then bundle those together. And in this case, I've got them set to create a permanent batch that creates a single output that goes out of this, uh, this guy right here. Now I can also set this to a temporary batch if I wanna separate those out later uh, or no batch. And if you do no batch, then it'll generate two outputs. So the two things that we're waiting will then leave and they maintain their identity. Uh, we're just gonna do a permanent batch um, so that we can easily dispose of them afterwards. And then we can choose because we're choosing a permanent batch, what uh, type of entity do you want that batch to look like? And we're gonna say, we're gonna make it a customer entity again. So that's basically, those are the two new blocks that I've created. And now I'm, if that's enough for you, you can stop here. Now I'm gonna walk through an example of how you might build a simple drive-through using these two new elements. So the idea here is that customers arrive at the drive-through according to some arrival process. And so I've got my create block from the basic processes here. And then that ends up setting my inter-arrival times up. So you do your input modeling, you figure out what those times should be. Then I've got an assign block. And in my assign block, I am going to assign the number of items that that customer will end up ordering. This I've got is some discrete distribution that I picked arbitrarily. You should do your input modeling to figure out what this distribution actually should be. Maybe it's a Poisson distribution. Maybe it is a different uh, explicit empirical probability mass function that you would specify with a disk function like this. Like you can see here, I've basically said there can be either one, two or three uh, items that the customer would order. They order one item with a 50% probability. They order two items with a 35% probability. So 0.85 minus 0.5 gives me 35%. And then the, the rest of the 15% here, um, so they get 15% chance to order three items. So that's what we've done there. Now, I also am going to stamp on that customer a unique identity. Where do I get the unique identity? Well, I know that every entity has a unique identity that is uh, labeled by this ident variable here, this ident attribute here. And so even though that ident attribute is already riding along with this entity, I wanna kind of remember, because remember this entity is going to get duplicated later. And so when this entity gets duplicated, the duplicate entity is gonna have a new entity ID. So I wanna remember what the kind of parent entity's ID was so that they can get matched up later again. And so that's why I'm kind of copying this unique ID twice at this point, so that when it gets duplicated, the duplicate will still have this customer name uh, attribute, even though its ID will be different. Now it turns out that there is a serial number attribute that you can get access to that uh, serves the purpose of what I'm doing here, but I'm just trying to keep things simple and make things as explicit as possible. And that's why I've done it here. Okay, so um, that passes through and I've got some seize delay release where I'm seizing the order window resource for a certain amount of time, do your input modeling to see how long it takes them to do the orders. Maybe that depends on the number of items they're ordering as well. So you can imagine going in through here and maybe changing some of these parameters based on the number of items. I leave that to you as an exercise. They then come out of the order process and that's where we do our separating. And the separating is gonna send the customer off this way and it's gonna send the clone of the customer which turns into the order itself which is being processed inside the store down the other way. So then uh, just for aesthetics, I've got another assign block where that duplicated uh, customer ends up taking on a new entity type order and it takes on a new picture, which now I just use picture.report because that kind of looks like an order to me. And then um, 
then that thing will go through and go through an order delay process, where here I've done another seize delay release, where I'm going to seize the kitchen resource. And so orders will then queue up waiting on this kitchen resource. And this is the thing that is going to cause orders to take longer than customers probably in order to hit the final pickup window. So they will queue up here. Now, this is where I had to build a model where depending on the number of items they ordered, they take a different amount of time. Now I did something cheap and dirty where all I did is I said, I'm gonna do an exponentially distributed waiting time on this where the average is just gonna be one times the number of items in the order. That's pretty cheap and dirty. If I was just saying that this is a sequence of three exponentials, each with an average of one, I should use an Erlang three distribution here instead. Or I should come up with some totally other way to model this. Like you might have stamped these things with different attributes. Like this person ordered a drip coffee. This person ordered an espresso. This person ordered food. And based on the types of things that they ordered, you get totally different waiting times going through this order process. I leave it to an ex as an exercise for you to complexify this thing here. But for now, I just needed something as a demonstration where based on the number of items that were in the order, I get different waiting times through uh, this, this resource. Now on the meanwhile, in the drive-through, the customer is going through here and that customer goes through a delay process and I just have them delayed by a certain amount of time. And you could think of that as maybe the time it takes to drive from the order window to the pickup window. Uh, again, I leave that to you. Um, I would recommend you take a look at this extension here where I really think the best way to implement a drive-through, if you're interested in the drive-through, or even maybe some of the things that are in the airport example is to use pool system logic, P-U-L-L, -L, pool, pooling through. There is examples of pool system logic. If you look under file, browse smarts inside arena here, and then you can go um, under uh, browser under control logic. There is this cool control logic pool system, which shows how you implement pool logic in one particular way. I also have built a video that you can find where I've implemented pool logic in Arena using hold modules. And so I hold for a condition and that's what generates the pooling. What I mean by a pool system or pool system logic is that really, you can't get access um, to the order window unless there's room in the drive-through. And whether there's room in the drive-through really depends upon whether people are queued up at the pickup window. So really, this whole upper branch here should probably be governed by seeing how many customers are currently waiting for their, uh, their order. And so that you can look at this queue and figure out how many customers are queued up waiting for their order. And you can then um, prevent customers from taking, uh, from making new orders until there's room for them to actually get to the order window to make a new order. So all that could be implemented in this kind of top branch here with pool logic. And I leave that as an exercise for you to figure out how to do. A good simulation of a, a drive-through should probably be doing that. All right, but getting back to this simulation where I'm just really focused on the merging, we've now delayed the customer by a certain amount of time. We've delayed the order by a totally different amount of time. They come through, we go through this merge block, which we've already talked about here. And they're going, this merge block is gonna wait until um, it has an, a customer in the top queue with the same customer name as an order in the bottom queue. And when both of those entities exist and arrive there, it will pull them out regardless of where they are in the queue. It will put them together into a batch and then it lets that batch go. Now for verification purposes, I've put an infinite hold right here, which will cause anything leaving the system just to queue up here so that me as a programmer can, uh, so that I as a programmer can investigate and inspect it in order to see if everything's working properly. Once I'm confident that things are working properly, properly, I can get rid of this infinite hold and replace it with the dispose that I have tucked away up here. So let's see what happens when I run this thing. I hit run and we can see, I'm gonna hit pause here in a second. Um, I, as, as you're watching here, I'll let you watch for a little bit and then I'll pause and point some things out and then we'll let it run again. Customers are arriving uh, and they are going through this top branch but they're also being duplicated. See two, two, we've had two go up here, two down here. Two were generated and they got duplicated. Two went up here and the other two went down here. 
And during this little line, you see they still look like people, then they go through here, then they look like orders. And then they'll get delayed in here for a certain amount of time and they'll get and the customers and still people icons get delayed in here for a certain amount of time. They end up showing up at this match block where um, customers will sit there and wait. So normally it's gonna be the customers that wait because it probably takes longer for the orders to get prepared. But you might sometimes see an order there waiting for its customer. And then when the, when the customer and order with the matching customer name meet each other, then they get batched together into a batch and that batch takes on the identity of a customer again. And then they get stuck here in this infinite hold. They would normally be disposed. So if I were to drill down into this customer here, I can see that this customer um, is in a batch that has two group members in that batch. If I look in the user defined attributes, I can see that the attribute for this customer has a customer name of two and it has a, a number of items of one. So if I go down and expand these group members, I can see that lo and behold, one of the entities in the group is an entity with ID number two. And that makes sense because I was expecting these two to be grouped together by customer name where the customer name was two. So if I look at this entity's uh, user defined attributes, then I see its customer name is equal to two. And that makes sense because it just got set to this entity ID. And then if I look at the other entity, entity four, if I look at its user defined attributes, I can see its customer name is also equal to two. So this entity four, that is the separate uh, order entity that got created in that separate block when it created that clone that then rid, uh, rode on through there. It has a different entity ID because all entities have unique IDs, but that attribute was cloned and so they still match in the attributes and that allowed them to be merged together. Now, you might notice that there's this serial number one, one and one, they all share the same serial number. And it turns out that each one of these things will end up having um, a matching serial number. So that serial number kind of plays the role of this customer name and there's ways that you can play with that as well. If I go back in here, this customer um, is just a plain old customer. This customer, if I look at its user defined thing, it has a customer name of three, which matches its entity name of three. It is not a batch. It's sitting there waiting for its order, the, the order with a customer name of three in order to come down through there. And it has a serial number of two here. So let's see what happens if we let this thing keep going. I'm gonna hit play. And did you see that? That order came through there and then shuttled that one right down through. So um, let this thing run a little bit more. And so you can see these processes going, you got customers that wait and then orders come after them. And eventually the customers get paired up with their orders and then they queue up. All right, so let's pause here and let's drill down into this customer. This customer is the one that has a serial number of two. So it's the next one. And there are now two members in this batch. And I should expect that this batch is the one that's associated with the customer that has ID three. And so if I look in my group members for this batch, yep, this entity has ID three, it's entity three. It is grouped together with an order that has an, that has ID seven. But if I look at that uh, orders uh, customer name, it is customer name three, just like this uh, entity's customer name is customer name three. It's like there, customer name three. And then all of them have the same serial number, just like they all have the same customer name. So you can see what's going on here. Um, these customers are generating orders and then being recombined to the orders later. And that allows them to sit and wait for their orders to go through a longer order process, just like you would at a drive-through or at a security line in an airport. All right, so um, again, I encourage you to implement pool system logic, but for now, I hope that helps you in figuring out how to get your um, your systems processing uh, these uh, these duplicate orders and then matching up again.